So AMD announced their 6000 series laptops, and I wanted to put together a quick rapid fire video about 10 things that you need to know about these new CPUs. The first is a new architecture called Zen 3 Plus. Like its name implies, Zen 3 Plus isn't a brand new design, but it's still a pretty big refresh. CPUs with it can have up to eight cores and 16 threads, but the real story here is the move to six nanometer manufacturing process. Along with a bunch of new power management features, N6 will lead to better overall efficiency and better performance too, since the CPUs should be able to hit higher consistent boost frequencies more often. On the efficiency side, we could see laptops that can go up to 24 hours of battery life, which is just insane. Now moving to six nanometer also allows for higher transistor density. And with some of that space saving, AMD is finally finally reserving some space or some die space for a better GPU, uh, kicking Vega to the curb and adding RDNA 2 graphics to their laptop APUs. I can't even describe how big of a deal this is. I mean, it's huge. You might have noticed that in our Ryzen 5000U laptop reviews, Intel's XE graphics could consistently beat Vega, and with Alder Lake's enhanced design coming this year, AMD desperately needed something to compete. So here comes their latest architecture with more cores, faster speeds, and a quantum leap forward for performance. And how much was the previous generation held back by Vega? Well, <laughs> a whole lot, guys. I mean, sure, AMD says this is just one generation, but Vega has more lives than a cat, and it's been around for years now. With the switch to RDNA 2, these new processors can pretty much double the gaming performance. And speaking of performance, AMD is also moving to DDR5. And that's a bit of a risk since we've already seen that uh, because of its looser timings, DDR5 needs ultra high clock speeds to match DDR4. Um, it might be a bit different on the laptop side, but the bigger concern here is DDR5's availability problems because they aren't expected to get any better until the second half of 2022 at the earliest. That's one of the main reasons why Alder Lake is backwards compatible with DDR4, but with Zen 3 Plus, it's DDR5 or just nothing. And I'm actually wondering if that'll lead to some major availability problems for 6000 series laptops. The Deepcool AK620 CPU cooler is a dual tower heatsink with six copper heat pipes and an attractive thin array to deliver competitive cooling performance while looking awesome. It's surprisingly quiet at full load, installation is hassle free, and RAM clearance is flexible if you move the fan. Check out the AK620 down below. The Zen 3 also has USB 4 support, which finally brings a high bandwidth interface capable of up to 40 gigabits per second to AMD laptops. Another nice thing about USB 4 is that it allows for PCI tunneling, which means Technically, companies can finally start developing external GPU docks that are compatible with ultra-thin Ryzen laptops. The PCI interface is also getting an upgrade too. Not many people picked this up, but the Ryzen 5000 series laptop processors were only working on Gen 3, which is why we never saw Gen 4 NVMe drives in them. Now the whole backend is moving to Gen 4, which is really nice. So with all the groundwork laid out, let's actually look into what AMD is actually launching here. I want to start with the U series, and unfortunately, there isn't much here. Just the 6800U and the 6600U get the new Zen 3 Plus design with RDNA 2, while the rest of the lineup is just a rehash of the previous generation with a 100 megahertz increase here and there. And yeah, Vega is still around. I'm actually really disappointed here because um, it's one of the areas that AMD really needed a proper top to bottom lineup to compete against our lake but it's just not the case. But there's some hope with those brand new processors because along with Zen 3 Plus, um, they also get higher clock speeds. And that ends up leading to the seventh point here, which is a lot better performance for the 6800U versus the 5800U. Only time will tell how they'll stack up against Alder Lake, but it's sure a good start and it points towards some big things for Zen 4 laptop launch next year. Meanwhile, the new H series also gets the Zen 3 Plus treatment with RDNA graphics and better boost clocks than the 5000H processors. For the most part though, base frequencies stick to the same speeds as before, and I really have to wonder if this is going to be enough to compete against the higher end Intel processors. But like I said before, the 6 nanometer process and all the new power management technologies should result in a lot more consistency and Hopefully that'll lead to better performance as well. Next up is the new SmartShift Eco technology that'll be available in laptops with AMD CPUs and GPUs running alongside one another. Uh, and the idea here is that once it detects you're running on battery, it'll actually automatically turn off the power hungry discrete card and switch completely to the integrated graphics. Now, sure that'll mean a huge cut in terms of performance, but at least you won't be chugging down battery power. Plus, this is supposedly user controlled, so if you still want that discrete GPU running at 100% on battery, 
there is that option too. The last thing I wanna talk about is smart access graphics. And this one needs a bit of an explainer. You see, in most hybrid graphics situations on laptops, the discrete GPU runs its outgoing display signal through the integrated graphics. So that allows uh, automatic switching between the two. So the high power graphics card can be used in things like gaming, while the IGP takes over situations that needs more power savings. Now on paper, that sounds great, but there is a catch. It actually ends up causing a fair bit of latency and lower frame rates. So what Smart Access Graphics does is it's supposed to fix that by automatically shifting the display signal between the discrete and integrated graphics. Now, a lot of you might think that this sounds a lot like a MUX switch. And well, you're right, but instead of using a toggle switch like traditional MUX, it looks like AMD will now be able to sort of do this on a hardware level, sort of like what NVIDIA did with Advanced Optimus. So that pretty much wraps up 10 facts that you needed to know about these new Ryzen 6000 H series of processors. And I've got to say, it looks like 2022 is a really good year for laptops, but a lot of it hinges on one thing for AMD, and that's availability. Because history has proven that Ryzen laptops offer huge performance, but actually getting hands-on one has always been, well, not as easy as it should be. In 2021, the Ryzen laptop lineup didn't have much competition because people were generally happy to wait a bit longer for their devices. But what will happen this year with all the lake being so competitive? I guess AMD just needs to pump out those processors ASAP uh, because they just haven't made it easy on themselves. There's a new manufacturing process and DDR5, which are big unknowns when it comes to availability. Um, you can actually see AMD hedging their bets by cutting down their U-series to just two processors and having the rest sort of backfilled by rebranded 5000 series. Meanwhile, if you look at Intel, they don't seem to have any problem with supplying Alder Lake to their partners. Uh, and, you know, they can always switch to DDR4 if there are any availability problems. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you guys are excited about these new CPUs from AMD. I just posted my Intel All the Lake Explain video, so if you want to check that out, link will be right over here. But yeah, I will see you guys very soon. Spend responsibly and stay safe out there, folks.